Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are clapping, clap for Jesus. If you are clapping, clap for Jesus. singing to yourself
service, I talked about why you need God's mercy. And I begin to expose to you why you cannot live without his mercy. But this afternoon, so if you've not been listen, I'm not going to repeat my message. Go and listen. Be like a like Sister Kemi. I'm going to listen back. But this afternoon, I want to talk about the time that you need mercy. The time. The time and the necessity of mercy. Because you must understand that if you don't understand timing, there's some things that will be delayed in your life unnecessarily. The time of mercy. You see, we live in a serious time. So fishers unto a day is evil. We live in a time of so much uncertainty. Where people's smartness and people, what they think they know, swap on them. If you are in that category this morning, you're in the right service. The time of mercy. The time. Psalm 102. You can please have your seat. Because you're going to pray this morning. And hopefully I'll be able to take you into how to receive the mercy. When the time is contrary. When the winds are blowing. Ah. 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 Help us, Jesus. Oh, I will lift up my eyes to the hill. For we come and my help. My help coming from the Lord. to say that if God did not show up for you if you were you have a testimony how many people like that that if it was if it was delayed for one day Makatopra if that testimony was delayed for 24 hours you know 24 hours is not that long 
You know, 24 hours is not that long. But you were at the airport. You were standing at the airport. And you look into heaven. If nobody has shown up, God just said to me, there's some of us in this church that have the testimony of two hours. You were stranded two hours. And you were where you are. It was just two hours. And while you were there, you were about to give up. And God showed up. There's something called time. Time. Alaba Suprata. And if you are in this place, because a, a time is going to also come, a time is going to come that you will need the help of God. A time. There was a time you needed the help. Harabashata. And when the time came, it was as if it was like a chance. How many people feel like that? It was as if you were lucky. Have you heard that before? They will say, you were lucky this time. But this morning, I want to teach you how time, ah, how to secure God's mercy at every junction of time. Because either you like it or yes, the time is going to come. You cannot deny it. A time is going to come. A time is going to come. I can give you testimony upon testimony of time. I think I've shared that testimony in this church before. We applied for something. And they said you must have an application to apply for what you're applying for. And it was going to close within a week. So my lawyer said to us, he said, I forgot. This is what he said. He said, I forgot or forget to tell you that you need it. Ah, that's what we paid you for. So he now said, you have to go and apply for it because without it, everything we've been doing for the last three months is actually a waste. I don't know how I forget. I think you know, I think you think you're smart until you get to a place called blind spot where everything you have put in place is not working. At that point, that's when you will know what the mercy of God can do. How will you get to that point? And you say to us, you don't know, you forgot. I'm a graduate. She's a graduate. It's as if somebody said, I forget how to... I don't know how to put it to you. How many people have been... Have, you, have, have felt so stupid of mistake before? You make a mistake and you felt like slapping your face in the mirror. And like you stand there, you wish everybody in the world can come together and say, come and beat me, join myself. How will you forget? So we went to where we are going to apply. And they said, we are sorry. It is a machine generated code. I'm online, so I can't tell you full details. So when we call this one, they will say it's a machine generated code. We will call another one. They will say it's a machine generated code. And it takes three months for the code to come out. Three months. Ah. So every day we were calling them. When you call, you will hear one Indian lady. You will call another one. It will be Japanese. You will call another one. It will be Vietnamese. And one day, What do you do when time is against you? Ah, I'm about to preach something today that changed my life that you must never forget. Christian, because that time is going to come. That time is going to come that you have exhausted everything that you think you know. And every opportunity close. What do you do? How do you secure God's mercy when time is at your door because time is going to come. Men are going to look at you and say, we don't know. So we begin to pray. One night, I wake up in the middle of the night 
My wife and I used to share, stay in a shared house. In a shared house with five people in this country. Listen to me. Don't let any man judge your future for what you are going through. Don't let any man define you. You're a progress of mercy. Are you listening to me, church? You're a progress of mercy. The progress of mercy. And I wake up in the night, I remember, I listened to one of my minister's message and I was praying. I cried to God. And I woke up. I had a small revelation. I'm giving you a testimony now of time before I go to my message. And I saw a revelation and God said to me, I saw a letter coming through the post written on it the number that I wanted. Oh, don't, don't give, don't shout hallelujah. Don't shout hallelujah. It's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream. I can't use the number. But I have the number. How many people have seen things like that before? You can see the number, but you can't use it because it's a dream. I won't go to the application and say, you know, I had a dream. I saw the number. When I woke up, I remember telling my wife, I said, this is what I saw. And my wife, she said, okay, honey, it is well with us. We, the last 24 hours, it was going to close. The day that morning, the night that night, the lawyer called and said, any news? I said, we have not. I said, we need to start thinking of what to do. I said, me too, I don't know. We went to work. We came back. In my heart, as I was taking every step, I was saying, God, you showed me. You showed me that I will receive a letter through the post. That sounds foolish to a lot of people, isn't it? So as I opened the door, here and behold, the letter I've been waiting for. I called the lawyer and I told him, this is the letter. He said that he has never had anyone get the application granted in one week. How you guys do it, I don't know. Then this scripture came to me. Psalm 102, verse 13. For thou we arise and have mercy upon Zion. You can miss it here. You can miss it here. For thou we arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time. For the time. For the time to favor. He did not stay there. He could have stayed there. He could have stayed there, but he said, There's something called set time. There's something called the right time. There's something called God stepping in. The Bible says, is a present help in time of need. And I've seen God, I've seen God stepping in for me in time. Somebody say, time. Just a simple recap to let you know that mercy is what the system in God that gave you the ability to receive what you don't deserve. That's the definition from my father in the Lord. He gives you the ability to receive what you don't deserve. That's mercy. And before you wear your religious face for me this morning, Mercy is not for unbelievers. Mercy is not for sinners. For all men have sinned. I come short the glory of God. Said in the first service. Romans said, because of the incapability or incapable for us to live the full glory of God. Mercy is the covering that covers you. 
Mercy is what covers you when you have exhausted all your energy and everything that you think you know how to do. Mercy says no. Mercy steps in. It carries you when other people are crawling. What makes other people cry? What makes other people weep? When all the people have come to the exhaust of themselves, mercy say, there's something about her. There's my investment over her. Told them in the first service, I said, there's some people that you will see by the structures and the look that they have. See, many people, when they see me, they say, is it the same Pastor Sam? I say, yeah, it's the one. It's the one. It's not. It doesn't have to. It's the one. But by the investment of mercy over our life and over men's life, mentors that we have seen, one of the men that always shocked me about God's mercy is my Bishop Bob Alunge. You know what I'm talking about. When I see him, his own physical body does not carry the expression of God. Of course, what else can I say about my father and the Lord? When you see him, you can't put one plus one together. How can this man, how can this man produce the amount of result he's producing? And God in heaven will laugh and say men are different. There are people that have understood how to secure the mercy of God. They might not look like it. They even don't have it. But when you see the result of their life and the what their life is producing, you will have no choice than to say there's something about this person. God's mercy. If you are in this place this morning, all you need to know is how to receive and secure God's mercy because God's mercy is what we sustain you in this time. Can I say to you, church member, we are in a serious time. We are in an uncertain time. And the children of Isaac have said, we understand season and time. If you look around you, that the race is not to the swift. Have you looked around you that the battle is not to the strong? Have you looked around you that the food is not to them that are hungry? I was watching a documentary yesterday from the city of Haiti. Is, is that the way they pronounce it? Yeah. There was an earthquake that happened almost 10 years ago. And threw the whole nation into chaos. And when I was sitting down there, just to let you know that food is not to them that are hungry. Young girl was there. The mother was crying. And according to the documentary, they amputated the hand of that little girl with no anesthesia. Time is serious. It will take the process of mercy over a nation and over a city to sustain this time. We are living in a dangerous time. We are living in a serious time. Almost 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you can enter any bus that you like, where I came from. Now you have to be careful the bus you enter. We are living in a dangerous time. Who will tell you, ever will you believe there will be a time that church will close down? In a night, in a Sunday, the whole world shut down. And nobody is sure who had COVID or not because it does not show on the face. I was saying to a friend of mine, I said, it's not a car that you avoid. You know, when a car is coming at a nice speed, at least you can run away. And I'm talking about things that when he grab people, he killed them within hours. And you are here sitting down. Time. Time when things are not working, you know, understand how to secure his mercy. I'm 
I'm going to tell you a good story of a man that understood time. What to do when time is knocking. If God permits me, I will go on to the other one on how to assess this message perpetually. But if I don't, I will stop there. I know your men of God are ready. They have been studying for mercy. God said to us, he said, Samuel, teach God, teach my mercy in this church until everybody knows the meaning of God's mercy. Because for the fact that you confess something does not actually mean it's working in your life. See, that's the problem with the church. Because the revelation that you don't have will never work in your life. So the problem with the church is this. We say it, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our life. It's a chorus to us. But can you point into your life things that happen as a result of mercy? Because when you carry mercy, you will know it. When mercy is working in your life, it will show. You don't, you will not, you will, it is not a, 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 how do I put it now? You know, like those guys that went to go and meet the demon and say, in the name of Jesus, that we know this, and the demon said, boy, in this kingdom, this is not how we rule the boys. We know each other. Jesus, I know. In this kingdom, we know. If mercy is working in your life, and when mercy is working, it comes with compassion, with favor, with kindness. They are all packaged that work together. If it's in your life, you will see it. Many of you, you are laboring too much. You need to know how to corner God for mercy. Ah! You are laboring too much. And listen to me. Quickly, a quick disclaimer, quickly. And I said it in the first service too. Mercy is not a license for laziness. It's not. But listen to me. Every strong man that achieved great things in life are tired people. You think it's easy to preach first service, second service, third service. Today only, I'm going to be preaching four times. Every great man are tired men. You think that the Jew is not tired? He's been moving around the city right now. From one country. Even How many people had a flight? You slept for three days. You only travel. Am I talking to you? Okay, if I'm talking to you, just hallelujah. You only traveled from UK to Nigeria. Or UK to anywhere in the world for three hours on the plane. And then it's three days you were sleeping. You were sleeping three days, and then the fourth day, call you say, I've not yet recovered. <laughs> How many people is like that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have not yet recovered. And you see a man at 80 years old flying between nation to nations, flying between territory to territory. There's something this man knew. There's something that is working in them. I've told you before in this church. If you don't understand what sponsors people's destiny, you will run the same race. You will, be, you will breathe hard and tired. Try it. Try it. Many of us, you cannot even fast at 6 o'clock and I'm not trying to pull you down, but what you need right now is mercy. <laughs> because the amount of the burden on your head when I was preparing for this, when I was praying, I said, God, you are asking us to take Nottingham and we are still here. We need mercy. The only thing that will bring, because there's some results mercy produces in the life of a man. Either you're a pastor, either you're a believer, either you're a worker, either you're a wife or, a, or a, an husband. See men in ministry for 10 years, nothing grow apart from the age of that church. The man has tried everything. Preached the word. Fasted. Nothing is showing. And I'm not trying to put them down. But the Bible said, they, they said the labor of a fool wearied them because he did not know the way in the market. There is a, there's a labor that can weary a man. You're trying everything. 
And it can happen in families. It can happen in career. You try everything until you get to a point in your life and say, you see what? I had enough. Time. A necessity for mercy. Because listen to me. I've come to the end of my life and I just want God's mercy. You know the story. I'm not going to waste your time on it because I want us to pray. And it came to pass Luke chapter 5. And the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God and he stood the lake of Gesherel and he saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their net. And he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon. You don't so much for me. I cannot tell it all. And I recollect. Yeah, if I have ten thousand times, he still would be. Sing it quiet if you can sing it. But the fishermen were gone out of them and they washed their head. And he entered the one that belongs to Simon. The Bible says, while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. Why did you choose Simon's ship? In the name that is above all name. Ah. <laughs> the Bible says he chose Simon. <laughs> it wasn't Simon's decision. Ah, you are the living God. Oh. Is there no one like you? He chose Simon. Sheep. You see, many of you, it's not because you were qualified, but God chose you. God chose you. I've seen a lot of people that try to say, oh, is it the work of God? You don't understand. There are better people that qualify more than me. There are better people that qualify more than you. But God chose you. God chose me. He chose me when I have nobody. He chose me when I don't know anyone. He chose me when I don't know what to say. He chose me. And the Bible says, He said to Moses, I will send you to them and I will give my word to you. And Moses said, I'm a man of a few words. And God said, No, I choose you. I choose you irrespective of who you are. I choose you despite of your adequacy. I choose you because of one thing. I choose you because of my investment of love over you. He chose me. He loves me. I cannot say why. <laughs> he loves me. I cannot say why. Hey, on Calvary Tree, He suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say. I just feel as you, as you clearly say this. This is why some of us, it's difficult for us to be proud, even when we, if we want to try to. Because every time God gives you a reflection of where He's bringing you from, you know, when God sees you, he will remind you of where you are coming from. He said, oh man, have I not framed you from the dust of the earth? He chose you. He chose you. The thousands of people on the street just walking out of nowhere and cars will just come and hit them. But he chose you. The Bible says he chose the boat and asked him to put a little from the land. Then he sat down and he began to preach from it. And he taught multitude from it. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. This truth today. 
will sink into your heart. Because mercy, though, is the mercy of God. There's some people that enjoy this mercy more than other people. The Bible says, Peter said, ha, you can use my boat. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. He said, use my boat. Use my boat. Peter did not know that by those actions, he was setting himself up for something. You see, this messy thing we're talking about, he said, to this man will I look. Peter said, ah, use my boat. Is it not my boat? What do I have? <laughs> you are the Lord of my You are the whole I cling to. You mean more than the world or oh, to me. I won't trade you for still. was David that understood it. This is why the Bible says when he was talking about the sure mercy of David. Watch this. Why was it? David said something. <laughs> After the judgment upon David for what he did, he said David woke up one day. He said, I want to build. The Bible says when he walked around his palace and he said, how will I be sleeping in my bed and my God He's sleeping in tent. So David woke up and said, Ah, I want to build for God. And God said, No, you can't build for me because your hand is filled with blood. So God said, Okay. David said, Okay, that's fine, God. If you cannot make me to build, I know what I'm going to do. I will give everything necessary. You see, when God sees your heart, that nothing value to you apart from his presence, you are a candidate for his mercy. Mercy look for you when God sees that. Listen to me, church. There's some people on this earth that nothing matters to us again. Oh man, what have you received that's not been given by God? What was the termination of a man, the young ruler? He said, everything you have, you want God's mercy to be in your life perpetually. You must come with that attitude, Lord. You know what? Because the problem is, there is an indication for you to be proud in the little that you have. Especially when you are getting some small, small results. You know, the result you are getting now is small. But the Bible says, for the eyes have not seen, nor the ears have heard. As he enter into the heart of me, what the Lord has in store for them that love him. The result you are seeing now is small. So what the devil does is this. He can divert your heart. Like what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Divert your heart. And you think you are the one that gets it yourself. And God will back off. And say, let's leave him. Let him try one more time. You know, some of us, the hardship we are facing, we actually cost it. Because we give glory to the wrong thing. And God said, let me show them. Let me show him. But we want to perpetually remain in the face of God's mercy. This heart must be with you. Lord, what is it that you like? Is what I like. Jesus, you want to use my boat? Is it not my boat? Come on. Jesus, I don't know you anywhere. You, you want to come into my house and sit down? You want to have, oh, come on, my life belongs to you. 
And when you place yourself in that attitude and that posture of your heart, can I say that one more time? It's a posture of your heart. Ah. Can I say it for the last time? It's the condition of your heart. Lord, my life belongs to you. Ah, God knows that you are ready for mercy. But the Bible says, and when he has, and he entered into the sheep and the salmon, and he prayed him that he would trust a little, and he taught. And when he has left speaking, he said to the salmon, launch into the deep and let down your net for a drought. He didn't say for a fish. He said for a drought. And someone answered and said to Master, I know you are a miracle guy, but I have toyed all night. And I've taken nothing. I have toyed all night, but I've taken nothing. Anytime you see in your life, that the performance or the result you are having is less than the is is less than the effort you are putting in. At that time, let your mind open up. You know you need his mercy. Because everybody put effort in. Like I said in the first service, the horse has prepared for the day of the battle. You put in effort in. You put in energy in. You exerting upon life. And it's as if the more you exert, the more resistance you see. It's as if you don't know what you are doing. At that time, sir. At that time, ma. You need what I call mercy. Mercy. He said, We have toiled all day, all night. But the labor of a fool weary them. We have toiled, we have tried everything I know how to do. Listen to me. I know what it means to toil. I know what it means to try everything. I've told you before the story, there was a time in this city that the devil wanted to wipe away Rehoboth's house. Devil was determined to wipe it off. Church, can I say something to you here? I went to my mentor. I said, I want to close down this church. There's no point. I'm a chemical engineer. I go back to my work. So there's no point. Nothing was working. The same year, a woman, a friend of mine close to us died. I was sitting by her side when she gave out the last one. Everything was contrary. The wind was terrible. Did I not fast? I did. Did I not pray? I did. But listen to me. When the tide was strong, I remember every morning, I would come light and Lord, have mercy on me. Don't let me be wiped out. Don't let me be wiped out. And my bishop said to me, he said, Samuel, he said, there's a voice inside of you that even if you shut down the church, that voice cannot be shut down. He said, what will happen is that you just become an angry, annoying person. Because everywhere you will go, the voice inside of you will keep speaking. And the nation that wants to hear your voice will be crying. But you have shut it down. For the Bible says, if you fail in time, trouble. There's only one indication, sir. Your strength is little. But listen to me, there's a place you get to when you've exhausted all your friends. Peter, Jesus, we have toyed all night. I've been on this matter. I've been
been on this prayer point. I prayed for the soul of this person. We have been on this situation for 16 years. We have been on this situation for 10 years. We have been here for 20 years. You must understand at that point you need something called mercy. Somebody say mercy. 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 Because listen to me at that point. God will come into your room. <laughs> you, you, I feel like reading the, the Bible, but my time is up. God will come into your room and cover you up. He covers you up. You see, some of us, this is how we come to God's presence. Lord, you know that, like that story is in the book of Luke. When Jesus was comparing two people that went to the temple to go and pray. And then the Pharisee said, he said, you know, God, I fasted. You know, I'm not like this publican person. You know, self-righteousness. And then you begin to quote all the scriptures. And some of us, the way we pray is even very funny. You know this, how many of us pray? Lord Jesus, how are you doing? How far? What is happening? Lord, if you don't answer me, why will you not answer me? Pastor, that's not the way you pray. That's your posture of your heart. That's the posture of your heart. You see, God does not look at the physical. He looks at the heart. This morning, I'm addressing something that will make you perpetually attract God's mercy. It was David that was praying. David said, Try me, O oh Lord. I know my heart. Is it being proud? It has nothing to do with how you greet me. Man of God, sir, I can greet you. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing, sir? And in my heart, I'm like, look at him. Look at the way he's looking at me. I can, because it's the heart, sir. Was it on Wednesday? Somebody was saying we should pray. Uh, that was saying that, you know, when you are praying that God should humble you. I said, be careful. In the Bible, he actually said, humble yourself under the hand of God. It is you that you will humble yourself. And when you come to the end of yourself, you cannot pray to God, I've tried. This, ang this pride and this anger want to kill me. Then you will not lay yourself and extra yourself. Then God can even come and help you. But you must take that initial step first. It's called the step of brokenness. When you have come to a place that nothing has mattered in your heart. Your heart is, is ready at that point. And at that point you receive God's mercy. Because I found that in one of my readings. That I found that in one of the revelations I saw in my readings. That mercy only exalts in your weakness, not in your strength. When it comes to you and you are always very powerful, get it, you figure everything out. Mercy will be like, look at this one. Let's, let's, let's leave him. Ah, God will not leave you in Jesus' name. Let's leave him. Let's see how far he can run without us. Let's see how far he can sustain life without God's mercy. I have toiled all night, Jesus. But nevertheless, Nevertheless, whatever you say to me now, I'm ready. Whatever you ask me to do now, I am ready. You see the state of heart of Peter. You see, that's why many of us need to get to. And when we get to that point in our walk with him, and say, Lord, do you know what? I'm ready now. God will say, now he's ready for mercy. Nevertheless, at your word. Many family don't receive God's mercy. Many men don't receive God's mercy because you still think you can take care of that family all by yourself. Told them in the first service, when I start life, I'm the most clueless guy ever you could ever meet in your life. I was so clueless. Something just tell me I was going to get things done. You know when you just have that kind of... And then when you now think about it, how did he do it? You think you know? Trust me. 
You think you got it all figured out? I was so clueless. I was te- I mean, we make a joke here many times with ourselves. When my son was born and he had the hiccup in the middle of the night, two of us didn't know what to do. We were crying. She was crying. Me, I went downstairs. I began to say, God, have mercy on me. How do you manage a boy having a cup? That's how clueless I am. Listen to me. I didn't get it. It would be wrong for me to stand in front of you. That everything I've achieved in my life is because, because I know what I am doing. It would be wrong for even me to stand there and say, because you know it's because we prayed. Ah, it's not that we don't pray, sir. But listen to me. There's a point I've gotten to when I've seen his mercy raw hand. The Bible says, and he said, Nevertheless, at your word, you want to see God's mercy in your life. His mercy followed when you obey his instruction. It might not make any sense to you. It might not even sound logical to you. Of course, it's not even going to sound logical. They don't catch fish during the day. I'm not a fisherman. But don't forget that Jesus just finished preaching. There were thousands of people there. How many people have seen where you see fish come and come and approach people? They will have run away millions of miles. But Jesus said, I have seen the toil of your life. I've seen how far you have been frustrated. And I am ready to have mercy on you. But because of our time, if you remember, let me say it again. If you remember in the latter part of Peter, when Jesus died and he went to heaven, Peter said again to his disciples, he said, I go a fishing. Do you remember? <laughs> Did you remember? And then when he went a fishing, guess what happened? The Bible says again, second time. He caught what? Nothing. But this time around, Jesus appeared unto him. And Jesus said, Peter, do you have any food? <laughs> but there was something Jesus called Peter. Who can remember? There's something he called Peter. No. He called Peter little children. He called, he's only a child that repeats the same mistake again. He said, Peter, daddy, you, you have not learned again that any time you take a decision outside us is a toiling day and night. So he called little children. But Peter didn't angry. He said, I understand who I am right now. I'm a little children. And Jesus said, now you are ready for mercy. Your state of heart is what I'm addressing this morning. Many of you, this year, God will be giving you instructions. Because the time that you are in in your life, you need God. Imagine if God didn't show up for Peter that night. He will go home hungry. His wife, thank God for women. Women of purpose. His wife is a bros. Show us what you bring back. Uh, in Alpha, you've gone since morning. I pray for all the men in this house. But the power in the name of Jesus and end come to your toiling in the name of Jesus. There's nothing like having results, sir. There's nothing like having results. So the Bible says, as I round up, as you throw the net, ah, the fish is wherever they were. You remember when I started mercy? Is what gives you what you don't deserve. All the fish begin to have meetings. Our master is calling us. 
when a man is in God's mercy, even things that does not make sense begin to happen in their life. This is how you know you are in God's mercy. Things that are supposed not to happen begin to happen. This is how you know you are operating in mercy. This is how you know that mercy is working in your life. When men begin to align themselves and say, what else can I do to bless you? And you think you had enough. But the Bible says, his mercy is new every morning. So all the fish begin to gather together. All the fish begin to gather together. Because there is a man that is ready for God's mercy. And the Bible says, they come together into the net and they come together into the net and the net begin to break. I love the fact that the net begin to break because there's some result. Only God's mercy can produce. Normally, if Peter has received enough fish, he will have still been grateful. Uh, you miss that. If Peter has received enough fish, even if just one or two, he will have just gone home and said, thank you, Jesus. But when it is God, goodness and mercy, they shall follow me all the days of my life. He's called pressed down, shaking together. Shall men give unto my bosom? There is a place of abundance that only mercy can bring you. And the Bible says the boat begin to sink. The capacity of God, the capacity thinks he had enough. But this time around, the boat begin to sink. The boat begin to sink because a man received mercy. Because a man received mercy. I said in the first service, mercy can suspend the rules. Mercy can suspend the rules. Mercy can change protocols. Mercy can make people join the queue. They will join the queue because of you. They will join the protocol because of you. They will join the system because of you. I don't know what the system might be. It will be when you came into this country that the system changed. And you think it's because you are lucky. It's the mercy of God. Rise up on your feet this morning. Mercy can break protocols. Hey, brother Kataya. Mercy can break protocols. The woman that his daughter, that daughter was sick, went to Jesus. He said, Jesus, my daughter, sick. And Jesus said, I don't give my, he said, I don't give, I don't, I don't give bread to dogs. And the woman said, ah, I'm standing in front of the world, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Even the, the crumbs, ah, and the crumbs heal with that lanes of hands. The crumbs heal, restore death, restore diseases. Just ordinary crumbs. Imagine if it was a full load. Mercy. Mercy. You are toiling too much, sir. Mercy. 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 One of the things God said to us in this church this year is that mercy is going to break protocols for us. Mercy is going to break protocols. It's going to break laws. It's going to break rules. It's going to break system. Because it's not because you are the only one. Because the mercy of the Lord is speaking for you. And the Bible says, the man that was blind, his name is called Blind Bartimaeus. He looked at Jesus and he said, Oh Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Lift up your two hands. That is your prayer this morning. Oh Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Are you praying this morning? Mercy that pray protocols. Mercy that pray protocols. Mercy that pray protocols. Are you praying or you are waiting for me? Mercy that pray protocols. Mercy 
say that break the rules mercy open your mouth sharp ratakataya come on pray I have life for prayer point but come on pray sharp ratakataya e prakatakataya barabara e mbredo soprata we pray the prayer in the first service, but I don't want you to miss it. There are five prayer points. The first prayer point is this. He says, satisfy us early with your living, loving kindness. He says, so that our youth might be renewed. Listen to me. You're going to pray this morning. You're going to pray this afternoon. Father, in the name of Jesus, satisfy me early. Satisfy me early. Satisfy me early. You don't want to do some things. There's some ages that you will get to there. There's something you will not be able to do. Are you praying or you are waiting for me? Satisfy me early, oh God. Satisfy us early with your goodness. Somebody needs to pray. Somebody needs to pray. That delay needs to be over. That delay needs to be over. You are not praying like you mean it. You are not praying like you want it. Amen. Because of our time, minister, you're going to come to the front. This season, Rehoboth House, is a season of our mercy. And one of the reasons re, I've been praying for you is that God will give you the result of mercy. That's the prayer I've been praying for you. So as the minister stands in front, they're going to anoint your head. He said, he anointed my head with oil. Then my cup runneth over. As a result of the oil over your head, your cup will run over. And you listen to me. Ah, you must understand that an impartation is an impartation that opens you up for more than things that is more than your own capacity. So by the time you go back to your seat, I'll be calling the prayer point. Just don't stop praying as we come into the communion and the, uh, to the anointing service. A pray kato prada kato prada. A pradosh kata. Okay, we need one more into get something, get a verse so that we let's get, let's get a verse so that we can be faster. Amen to you. One of the prayer points we pray while we're waiting in the first service is this. The reason why many of us need mercy is what I call the transgression of our fathers. Listen to me. It was, the, it was the blood of Abel that was crying for justice. The delay over your life might not even have anything to do with you. The delay that you're experiencing might not have anything to do with you. But listen to me, for the sake of God, God can show you mercy. He can show you mercy over judgment. The Bible says mercy speaks over judgment. The Bible says mercy prevail over judgment. Mercy prevail over judgment. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands. And as you begin to the usher, please direct people to the front. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, over judgment, Father, have mercy on me. Anoint me with your mercy. Look at me with a lens of mercy. E prata kato prata kata kata ba. E mbre dekete prasu prata kata ya ba. E pre keto prata kata. Make sure you are praying. E pre dekete so prata kata na bradosa. E braka gaga daga dosa prata. E braka daga daga na ba so prata kata. E pre dekete dekete prato prata ke. Come on, pray for mercy. Come on, pray for mercy. Every spirit of lateness, let mercy speak for me. Shaprakatakatayara, ebrakato prataya. I am tired of hardness. Let your mercy speak. Ebrakatakataya, ebraketa bosa padara, ebrakagadara. Let your mercy speak for me. Come on, John, pray. Let your message speak for me. 
Let your message speak. Let your message speak for me. Shabrakata. Let your message speak for me. Shabrakata. Hold on. Hold on. Pray this prayer. Let your mercy direct my step. In this new year, let your mercy direct my step. There is a path of fruitfulness. There is a path to make it. Let your mercy lead me. Are you praying? Eprakata praso prata ya. Eprakata ya. Let your mercy. Let your mercy. Let your mercy. Anoint my head with your mercy. Let your mercy direct me. Favor of mercy. Favor of mercy. Shabraka gadara. Rehoboros mercy. Shabrata gadara. Mercy. Rata bakata gadara. Your message speak for me. Shaprakata gara. We pray for mercy. Let your message present. We cry for mercy. Mercy result. Result of mercy. Result of mercy. Result of mercy. One of the things we've been praying for, and we're going to pray as you're getting the hole in your head. You're going to put that anointed hand in that head. There's a result that mercy can produce. I've told you just now. There's a result mercy can produce. Rehobot House, the result mercy will produce. The growth mercy will produce. The breakthrough mercy will produce. Open your mouth. In the first quarter of 2022, result of mercy. Result of mercy. Come on, pray. Where you have been rejected, mercy. Where you have been denied, mercy. Where you have failed, mercy. Where you have been rejected, mercy. Shapakarabada da 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 da